My name is Sam Deeb, and I'm one of the two trustees here at St. Anne's Parish. As a trustee, we feel it's important to provide annual updates on St. Anne's financial performance. But before I get into that, I just want to mention our faith is a special gift from God. And how we, our congregation and parishioners, share that faith amongst not only each other, but within the Syracuse community is what makes St. Anne's so unique and special. You know, this is the third Mass that I'm presenting today, and it's, it's actually refreshing to see the increase in the congregation. And it's not just the Christmas season. We've seen it over the last 12 months. And you'll see how that's translated into improved financial results. I'm not here to frisk your pockets. I'm here to give you a real simple two-word message today. That message is thank you. Thank you for what you do to support our parish through your financial support and the sharing of your time and talents. I know it's still a little early, but I want to give you a little eye test. If you can focus up on the altar here, I'm just going to highlight a few things in our financial statements. The blue section is our, what we call our ordinary income. It's primarily from the weekly offerings. And if you look at it on a year-over-year -year basis, our fiscal year ends June 30th, 2024, and that compared to June 30th, 2023, you'll actually see that our revenues went from 400 and roughly 88,000 in 2023 to just under 505,000 in 2024. That was about a $17,000 or 3.3% increase. I stood up here last year and asked for your help, and you stepped up. So again, thank you for that. The green section highlights our ordinary expenses. In 2023, our ordinary expenses were about 514000 compared to 509000 a little over $5,000 improvement on a year-over-year -year basis. Those expenses are the salaries and cost to keep the lights on and keep the church running. It's no coincidence that those numbers are close to each other because we're basically able to only spend what we have. But that's not bad news. Um, again, you've stepped up and provided us with increased weekly contributions, which is allowing us to do more. So in 2024, we had a slight loss of about $4,000 compared to just under a $27,000 loss in 2023. So that's a little over a $22,000 improvement. The last section I want to point out is the extraordinary income. And there's really three areas or items I want to highlight for this past year. If you look, we had 78,000 in ordinary income. Those three items were, first of all, $117,000 gain that we realized as a result of the sale of a condominium that the parish owned. Um, we paid about 58,000 into the victim's trust fund. And then we had a little over $12,000 of, of income from our investments. So overall, we finished just under $74,000 in overall gains for the year compared to a $16,000, $17,000 loss. So overall, that's not bad. So in closing, I just want to ask for your continued support. Keep doing what you're doing. You know what you can afford. What you do makes St. Anne's such a wonderful place to worship. Again, thank you, and may God bless you for all that you do. Good morning again. <clears throat> 
Our faith community of St. Anne's welcomes you today as we celebrate the second Sunday in Advent. My name is Donna. I'll be your lector for this celebration. And Advent is a time of preparation. Be that voice crying out, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Our celebrant is Father Mike, and our homilist today is Father Deacon Bob. Please stand and join us in singing our opening hymn today, number 73, The Advent of Our King. The advent of our King our thoughts must now employ then let us meet him on the road with songs of holy joy the co-eternal son a maiden's offspring see a servant from Christ putteth on to set his people free. In glory from his throne again will Christ descend and summon all who are his own to joys that never end. A joyful praises sing to Christ who set us free. Like tribute to the Father, bring and Holy Ghost to thee. Good morning. Good morning, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God's grace, love, and peace be with each of you. And with your spirit. This morning, we stand before the Advent wreath, and we light the second candle. It's the candle of peace. God of peace, as we light the second Advent candle of peace, may your peace fill our hearts and our world. Help us to be peacemakers in our relationships and communities. Stir up our hearts that we may prepare for thy only begotten Son, that through his coming we may be made worthy to serve thee with pure souls. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us join in singing, Lord, have mercy. It is number 916. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, May no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever. Wrapped in the cloak of justice, injustice from God, 
Bear on your head the mitre that displays the glory of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor. You will be named by God forever the peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Up, Jerusalem, stand upon the heights. Look to the east and see your children. <clears throat> Gathered from the east and the west at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you. But God will bring them back to you, borne aloft in glory, as on royal thrones. For God has commanded that every lofty mountain be made low, and that the age-old depths and gorges be filled to level ground, that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forest and every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory and with his mercy and justice for company. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord like the torrents in the southern desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying seed to be sown. They shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I'm confident of this, that the one who began a good work for you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value, so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Turia and Triconitus, and Lysanias was tetrarch of Albaline, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. A voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord and make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding road shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall, shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here we are at this, in the second week of Advent, and before you know it, Christmas will be here and gone. And we're going to look back and say what? What will your memories or my memories be this year? Will they be the hustle and bustle to get ready as our calendars are jammed full of activities and commitments and parties and appointments? Will they be of the time spent decorating and getting everything prepared the smell of Christmas dinner and pine needles? Or will they be of Christmas music and Hallmark movies? This all comes with the season, and we all do the best we can to fit everything in and to make some sort of contact with as many relatives, friends, and family as possible. It's kind of tough for my wife and I as our grandchildren live out of town. And they're both turning two next week. But technology has been a real big bridge for us and bridge this gap. We get really excited when the phone rings and it's FaceTime from California or Annapolis. And to see the expressions on the young faces when they hear Grammys or g -bops voices, it's precious. Relationship. Relationship is what this season of Advent, followed by the 12 days of Christmas, is all about. We first prepare our hearts, and then we celebrate from our hearts. For some, this is a difficult time of year due to the loss of someone so close. The void is still prominent, the heart still filled with grief. A grief that is caused by loving someone so much that the transition to eternal life is still being deciphered. In the Gospel today, Luke tells us the story of John the Baptist as an example for us to follow this season of anticipation of the coming of Jesus. This is a story that can help us form our hearts, no matter what shape they're in, as they are in, and all we need to do is this. All we need to do 
is carve out a little bit of time from our busyness to pay attention to our hearts. God came to John and called him to be that voice of one crying out in the desert, proclaiming uh, um, uh, to prepare a way for the Lord, proclaiming a baptism of repentance and that of forgiveness of sins. And this is our model for the next few weeks, to first quiet ourselves so that we can listen and hear our God from within. John was in the desert with minimal distractions and thus was open to the recognition of the call. How do we do that? How do we separate ourselves from distractions and busyness so that we can open our hearts to recognize the Holy Spirit working from within our lives? How do we find our desert? How do we allow hope to work us over, so to speak, as in the first reading with respect to the Israels, where we heard that what lies ahead of them is glory is on a royal throne, where lofty mountains are made low and gorges filled to the ground, level, not by force, but by a voice. John preached a message that all needed to be washed clean in grace of those things that get in the way of our relationship. The exalted and the proud must be made low. The depressed and the despaired must be raised up, all by the change of heart. It is in our hope and in our faith that obstacles that get in the way of our relationship with God and get in the way with our relationship with each other are flattened and the way forward made straight. Our hearts change through repentance and forgiveness, then become ready for the coming, open to the Holy Spirit and the fire that, that the presence of God in our lives in a renewed relationship with Jesus in this Christmas season, followed that leads us, leads us in all of our thoughts, our actions, what we say, and who we are as people. So during these weeks of Advent, do not miss opportunities to experience grace, maybe at a new level. Our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is not meant to be static. It's meant to be one that continues to grow dynamic in nature in a community setting. And it's meant to be shared and nurtured, especially around this table in the Eucharist. Our faith may be personal, but it's not meant to be private. We, together as a community, are meant to climb the Lord's mountain together, to experience a love of God through each other. In the next few weeks, embrace more fully the reality of Jesus Christ and the truth, the beauty, and the goodness that he's revealed in all different ways to each and every one of us. And take the words of John to heart and make more room within your heart, our hearts, for Jesus. Find that spark of God within us, the hand of the Lord upon our shoulder, the whisper of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, and discover this Christmas morning a touch of divine grace as you unwrap your hearts in this love. So I'd like to end with the prayer that St. Paul gave to the Philippians that we heard this morning, and today he gives that same prayer to all of us here. He said, my prayer for you is that your love may increase more and more, evermore, in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value so that we may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. It comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and the praise of God.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. John the Baptist called people to repentance and prepared a way for the Lord. We now make these petitions as we prepare to welcome Christ our Savior. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who make up churches and communities of faith, may they put on the splendor of glory from God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who are living in the margins of society, May they find peace in their every day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Craig and Cindy Dudzak, as we congratulate them on receiving the Immaculata Award, may their hearts continue to grow in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our Advent celebration, that it will be a time of reflection and anticipation on the coming of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the communicants of St. Anne's, that we prepare for the way of the Lord, we, pr we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all of those who are sick, may they feel the healing hand of our God, especially for Rita Stone, Pete Gasparini, Marie Maring, Bill Verity, and those who are listed in our prayer list. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all of those who have gone before us, mark with a cross, the sign of our faith, especially for Jeremy Mann, Father of Brendan, Caden, and Logan, and for Eileen Carr, for whom this Mass is offered today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. And our sanctuary lamp will be burning this week in loving memory of George LaValle. And we now pray for the intentions that we all offer in the silence of our hearts. And we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, when your only Son was to come into this world, we were given hope and salvation. With that same hope, we trust you will grant our petitions, which we make through Christ our Lord. Please join us in singing hymn number 52, The Angel Gabriel Came from Heaven. Oh, 
most highly favored lady, Gloria. For no blessed mother you shall be, all generations praise continually. Your son shall be Emmanuel by seers foretold, most highly favored lady, Gloria. Then gentle Mary meekly bowed her head to me be as it pleased. She said, my soul shall love and magnify his holy name. Most highly favored lady, Gloria, Gloria. <coughs> My friends, let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfill the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation. And when at last he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominations, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Bless Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walked with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, together with Francis our Pope and Douglas our Bishop, and all your people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the time by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us all attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along with the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Anne, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all disease, distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My friends, may the peace, the love, and the joy of the Lord be with each of you. Amen. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other thanks for the peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. And behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. Please join us in singing hymn number 61.
you have fashioned us. In the garden you made us. You have given us the breath of life, voice to praise your name, voice to praise your name. When I thought we long for your peace, the Ranatha, we long for your mercy, the Ranatha, we long for your coming, O oh God. In our weakness, we have drawn from you. sent your Son, your salvation for everyone. Word incarnate, God's compassion, hope for humankind, hope for humankind. Maranatha, we long for your peace. Maranatha, we long for your mercy. Maranatha, we long for your coming, O oh God. We await your day of glory. Bright Jesus, rejoice for us. Gentle King, just Maranatha, we long for your peace. Maranatha, we long for your mercy. Maranatha, we long for your coming, O oh God. O oh Thank you so much for joining us for this Mass around this table and sharing ourselves uh, with each other and in the Eucharist. And I uh, appreciate, I'll, I'll uh, reiterate what Sam said at the very beginning, the big thank you for all of our parishioners, for all that you do in making this community what it is today. So thank you so very much for that. If I know the numbers were hard to see on the overhead. I, I don't know how else to do it but they're all in the uh, handout in the bulletin. If you have any questions with any of the numbers or don't understand something, you can come back and, and talk to me or talk to Father Cliff or Sam, the trustee. Our other trustee is Mary Gasparini. So we have two trustees. So any questions, uh, we'll answer them for you. Bring them back to us. So we still have a busy month ahead of us. We had Parents' Day out yesterday. It was a really big success over in the Pear Center. And the Pierce Center, when it was all said and done, looked like a family room in our house after about 20 kids had been there for about three hours. So you understand what I'm talking about. It, was, it just looked like they had a great time. We have breakfast with Santa next week. 
on December 15th. We have sign-ups up front. We need um, help in the kitchen. So if that's something you'd like to do and help us with preparing the breakfast for everybody, we have sign-up sheets here in front. We also, later in that day on December 15th, have lessons and carols with our youth, um, our faith formation older youth who will be doing all the uh, caroling and the lessons. So you're, we, even though it's a class for them, we invite the parish to this event. So uh, come if you can. And then our Christmas pageant with the younger form, uh, formation for ministry youth will be on uh, Christmas Eve at, right before the four o'clock mass. So the giving tree is up over here. If that's something you can do with helping a family in the area out this Christmas, please take a tag and um, the instructions on what to do are on the tag. Um, last announcement, Holy Day, the uh, um, Immaculate Conception of Blessed Virgin Mary is tomorrow. And there are two masses here on this side of town for that. At IC, there will be a mass tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. And then at St. Anne's, there will be a mass at 5.30 p.m. Thank you. I'd just like to mention the Feast of the Immaculate Conception because often people will say, I'm not sure what that's all about. But you can't understand it unless you go back to the beginning of the scriptures and the story of creation where God creates and every time he creates something, he said, it is very good. But when he created man, he said, it is very, very good. But when the story of Adam and Eve then comes where they disobey, they, we call it original sin. And that means that I don't and cannot believe that I'm very, very good. So all of us inherit that. So that on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, Mary was not given that. She believed in God's love for her. She believed in that, her goodness. And so on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, as we prepare for Christmas, it reminds us that at baptism, that original sin has been wiped away. And we are called to believe that, to believe that when God looks upon you and I, despite all our weaknesses, that he says, as he said in the creation, you are very, very good. And then Christmas brings that forward in his coming to us. So let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve our God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please join in singing our closing hymn, Christ Be Our Light. It is number 518. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people. Light for the world to see. Christ, be our light. Shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light. Shine in your church, gather today. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Christ, be our light. Shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, 
Christ be our light, shine in your church gathered today.